Take your Bibles then, turn to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, and I'm just going to read verse 14 at this time. Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you've allowed us to be here today. We thank you that we can trust you in all things. And I'm trusting you right now to preach a message to us, Lord. To give us the things that we need to hear. Lord, I ask that you would just guide and direct in every single word, every single phrase. Forgive me of my sins and use me at this time. Speak to our hearts and speak to our minds that we might know you better, that we might love you more. Lord, we would ask that someone would hear this sermon and you would use that to draw them to your son Jesus who died that we might have life. Lord, I ask that you would cause us, your people, to repent of the things that keep us from having the walk that we should have with you. Whatever is son, what is said, whatever is done, whatever is even thought here today, Lord, let it be pleasing unto you. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name for his sake. Amen. Amen. Now normally I give you a title for my sermon, but I don't have a title this morning because I don't know what I'm preaching quite yet. I'll let you know uh, when I get there. Um, we started out here in first uh, or in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, and let me give you a little background on how we got here. Um, a friend of mine uh, was preaching Wednesday, and he was saying, you know, there was a uh, uh, part of his sermon that, that he was still struggling with and he asked if I had any thoughts and I looked at it and instantly I got about three and a half points that popped into head, in my head and I told him I'd, I'll, I'll get back to you later on around, I was at work around lunchtime of course uh, we were very busy and I got to lunch uh, a good hour and a half later than I normally do and I was sitting down and I remembered that I was supposed to um, about halfway through lunch, as a matter of fact, remembered I was supposed to get back with him. And um, so I scrawled down on a paper towel uh, some points. And I had set in my mind that I would not preach that sermon today because uh, I knew he was preaching on this, this topic. Now, he did not use my outline by any means. And as a matter of fact... Uh, I, the, the sermon I have today I don't think will be anywhere near as good as what he preached Wednesday night. Uh, and I would recommend uh, that you, uh, uh, I can show you the video, I can share you the, with the, the video, I've already shared it once, but uh, he preached a great sermon. I'm not trying to out-preach him or improve on anything that he said. And so I really did not want to preach these points today. I thought I'll put them in, in, on the back burner and preach them somewhere down the road. Um, and then I went to, stopped off at a revival meeting on the way back from Ohio last night, and I heard a, a Brother George Sled preach there at the Jordan Baptist Mission in Georgetown, and uh, he preached on Jonah. And he preached on Jonah and uh, Jonah chapter 2, he was apparently preaching through the book of Jonah uh, during this revival meeting, and he was in Jonah chapter 2, and he preached on the prayer of Jonah, and he brought out many great things. And one thing that he said, uh, and I'm, uh, I, this is not a direct quote by any means, but uh, 
More or less, he said, uh, to seek repentance or to have revival, you must go to the cross. Those of us that are saved that need repentance need to return to the cross. The reason we get where we are and get so far away from the high calling that God has given us is because we've forgotten. As a matter of fact, I was as I was last night, as I was driving, I was forming another sermon. The sermon that I wanted to preach, not this sermon today. Uh, the sermon that I wanted to preach was talking about was going to talk about how many of us are over the hill. And I'm not talking about age, I'm talking about the hill called Mount Calvary. We've gotten over it. We were saved at one point. Uh, we were uh, uh, on fire for the Lord at one point, but for some reason, we have left our first love. And now we're just going through the motions. And a lot of what Brother Sled preached last night had to do on that topic. About how we get to the point where we're just going through the motions. And uh, making the Jonah reference, he didn't say this, but just, this just comes to mind. We don't put ourselves in the... We don't see Jonah in ourselves, basically. Because we've never gotten on a boat... Probably none of us have had nobody here other than myself. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Has ever uh, been told by God to go and to preach a message? Um, and we don't see ourselves in direct disobedience with God, like we we obviously know Jonah was. And we get caught up in these other things. And just like I wanted to put this sermon on the back burner, the, the, this outline and preach out of this passage, for some later date, um, we put God on the back burner. He's not foremost because we've got other issues. And just like Jonah was swallowed alive, we get swallowed alive with our lives and, and we get caught up. And some of us never even realize that we're backslidden because we just gradually drift <clears throat> into this sleep. <clears throat> Every once in a while, I, I will wake up about an hour early. And I'm like, I got another hour to sleep. So I'll lay there and a lot of times I'll go ahead and uh, I'll just talk, start talking to God and, and, and uh, uh, get comfortable. And then the alarm will go off. And you're like, was I awake that hour or did I fall back to sleep for a while? We get so comfortable, we don't know whether we're awake or we're asleep sometimes. And then we wonder why nothing happens in our lives. We wonder why nothing happens in the church services. We wonder why no one seems to repent. Nobody seems to walk down the aisle. No one, no one gets saved. No one gets baptized. No one uh, recommits their, their, their life to Christ. We're not pressing toward the mark. Now I'm going to give you the five points. Actually, I, I, when I was writing down the, the, those points on, on, on the paper towel... A few other points for a completely different outline popped into my head. And then this morning, when I was standing in the pulpit looking at the, the, the verses, I got three other points for another outline. That's a pretty good verse, isn't it? Amen. 
You can just keep mining that and mining that and digging in it. But we see here in the verse, the prince, Jesus Christ. And I think we, we just think Jesus, you know, we, we know better because we've been taught better, but we hear the name Jesus Christ. We forget that Christ is not his name, it's his title. He is the anointed one. He is the chosen one. He is the prince. He is uh, uh, going to be crowned king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. How can we haphazardly serve him? As Brother Sled said last night, we need to go back to the cross. Not only because it's his right as king, it's his right as our prince. Look what he did for us. The kids saying Jesus loves me this morning. And then us adults had to add on, we sang Jesus loves even me. It's easy to love these kids, but Jesus loves even me. Well, I was yet a sinner, Jesus loved me. When I was in enmity with him, he loved me and he died for me. I was not a righteous man. I was a sinner lost and Jesus loved me and died for me. He's our prince. We see the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was always a church guy. He was always a church guy. Saul was a lost church guy, and Paul was the same church guy. But he grew up in the scriptures. Now, he wasn't in the Lord's church, but he was very religious. Before the Lord saved him. He was counting on his religion to save him. He was counting on his righteousness to save him. There's another outline right there. He had his religion. He had his righteousness. There on Damascus Road. He had his realization. Of who he is. And who God is. When we realize who God is, that shows us who we are. When we realize how holy and righteous God is, that, that makes us realize how unholy and how unrighteous we are. How undeserving we are. So here was a man, and earlier in this chapter, he talked about all the things he had going for him. He said, I left that all behind that I might know Christ. We had the prince and we had Paul. Then it speaks of the press, the struggle that we have, the race that we run, the necessity that we have. Once again, we, a, a lot of times we get to the point, oh, I'm just glad I'm saved. There is a press upon us now, when my friend, uh, he preached on this, he talked about playing basketball when he was younger. And how his coach would yell out there in the, the fourth quarter, press, press, full quarter press. And I remember when, when Nathan was playing soccer, for some reason, they made me the assistant coach, just because, not because I knew anything about soccer. <laughs> just because they needed somebody to be the assistant coach. And we'd get down there to the last few minutes of the game. And I would yell out at those kids, leave everything on the field. There's no reason not to spend it all up. Time is running out. Give everything you got. Be exhausted by the time that whistle blows and the game is over.
And then there's the prize. We also see in almost the same points, we see the maker, the man, and the mark in that verse. All right, I've used up about half of my time. Let's go ahead and delve into this uh, outline that I've been trying to get away from preaching. We see the setting of the mark. The setting of the mark. Paul said, I press toward the mark for the high prize, uh, the high prize, or I'm sorry, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There is a mark set, and it's set by God. It's set by God. It's not set by your pastor. It's not set by yourself. You know, we set, we set a mark maybe that's easily attainable. God has set the mark. God ha ha has, ha has made the goal. Our Lord will judge us. It is set by the mark. By us. The mark is set by God in Christ Jesus. What is the mark? Now we talk about running the race. But the mark in this life is our Savior. We've got a song in our songbooks, more about Jesus. That's what Paul is saying here in this passage. He wants to know more about Jesus. And wanting to know, why do we want to know more about Jesus? Because we should want to be more like Jesus. Jesus is the standard set. If Brother Duncan was the standard set, all of you would be a great success. All of you would make it into heaven. The bar is set pretty low when you're looking at Brother Duncan. And honestly, the bar is set pretty low when I'm looking at you guys, too. Jesus is our standard. Anything short of Jesus is short. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus is our Savior. The only reason we can be in that direction and pointed toward the mark and striving for the mark is because we have Christ as our Savior. The reason why we should seek Him and desire Him and want to be more like Him is because He died for us. The only righteousness we have is imputed from Him onto us. But He's also our strength. Over the next chapter, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I'm sure you've heard this verse quoted. Maybe you know this verse. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. This race that we're, we're running, the, 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 this press that we're making, striving for the mark, is impossible for us. But we can run this race. We can strive for that mark because Christ strengthens us throughout. In Matthew chapter 11.
Verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We have this monumental task before us to serve the Lord, to seek the mark, to evangelize the world, to, 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 to serve Him. He said, come to me. And when He's talking about rest, He's not saying don't do anything. He's saying, I'll help you. That's what my yoke is easy means. We're yoked to him. We're still to run the race. We're still to strive forward. But let him carry the burden. That's the only way we're going to go on. We have the setting of the mark. We have the seeing of the mark. Paul is aware of the mark before him. You know what I think most of our problem is? We're not aware. We're not consciously aware that there is a mark set before us. We're running a race that we don't even really realize that we're in. And maybe it's because in this race where we're running around, we're looking at the other runners, and they're not moving either. So we're thinking we're moving at a pretty good speed. You ever be driving down the road and uh, you think you're driving at a good speed and all of a sudden somebody just blows by you? You know, we're just moving with traffic. Most Christians today are moving along at a snail's pace. You hear these runners that, that they get in a marathon and they're just happy to finish the race. Oh, I'm just happy to finish the race. And that's all they've got when they get to the finish line. There is no prize. There are no laurels. They just finished the race. Paul is aware. We need to be aware of the fight we're in. There is a cause. God has given us a cause. God has given us a mission. The only reason we're still down here is to do the work of God. We're still called upon. The church may seem obsolete to many. The preaching of the word may seem foolish to some. But there is still a cause. I believe David said that to the, the, the armies of Israel when, when uh, Goliath was challenging them. Is there not a cause? They're all standing on the sideline. There is a course. There is a correct course, as a matter of fact. I remember years ago, uh, and it, it probably still happens every now and then, you talk about a marathon, where somebody finished with a great time and they found out that he had snuck off and went some other way. I think he even caught a ride in a car uh, at some point. There is a correct... That guy was disqualified. There, there is a course. Paul mentions that. I believe it's in 2 Timothy where he says, I fought a good fight, I finished the faith, I have kept the course. Now henceforth there is a crown of righteousness set before me. Jesus talked about two different courses. There, he says that, uh, said that there was a, a broad path that leads to destruction. But he said to, 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 to strive to enter into the straight gate, that narrow path, we are to run. And there's a concern. Paul, Paul the Apostle was concerned 
about running that race. Paul the Apostle was concerned that he would not run, that he would not strive, that he would not press the way he should. He said that I have not yet apprehended, I have not yet attained. Elsewhere in the scripture, he was afraid that he would become a retrobate, a reprobate. If Paul had to worry about it, don't you think you and I need to worry about it? If Paul's concern was that, that, that he would stagger off course or he would stop or, or, or whatever, don't you think we should be worried about it? Don't you think we should be concerned? We see the swiftness of the mark. Paul said, I press. Paul was running to win. Most of us are just coasting. We're just coasting like it's a downhill ride. We're just wanting to slide through. Some are cramping up. We run the race and we get a cramp or we dash our foot on a rock or something. That's no time to quit. Now normally I prepare my sermons upstairs. I've got a room that I, that I study in. But I'll come down from time to time to get something to drink or to do something while I'm studying. And this morning as I was putting this all together... There was, I guess it was the Today Show was on. And they were doing a story on this guy that, that I guess the Tour de France is going on right now, uh, I'm assuming from the, the story. And they were, they were showing this guy who was in absolute last place, but all the cameras were upon him. And the reason why he, uh, the uh, last place guy was getting so much attention was because he was involved in a crash earlier on, early in the race. That race, what, takes several days? He was injured. I think his shoulder was dislocated or something. He had uh, injuries to his legs. Many of the other guys in the crash, uh, maybe all of them, had quit the race. He said, this is the Tour de France. I'm not going to quit. So the, 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 the fastest pace in his condition he could go in, he continued on. He was wanting to finish that race. We get injured along the way, do we not? We get our feelings hurt. We have terrible things happen to us. We have sickness and death that occurs around us. We have tragedy that occurs. We get hobbled by life many times, hobbled on the course. We must continue in the press. As important as the Tour de France is to this guy, the course that we're running should be more important. Some are completely asleep. When I was thinking of the, 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 the illustration of a race, I was thinking of the hare and the tortoise. Now the tortoise was a tortoise. He was going as fast as he could go, but he was still a tortoise. But the hare, who could go much faster and could easily finish the finish line, fell asleep. I'll just take it easy. Some of us are asleep on the course. He woke up and found out it was too late. When I was thinking about this, I was thinking about our lives and how it is a course. And we compare it to a marathon. We've already done that. We think it's a, a long stretch. And we have to pace ourselves. 
At the same time, as long as this course is, our life is but a vapor. So it seems like a long course, but it's also a short course. Because we only have so much time. We're racing against the clock. There's the struggle of the martyr. I think uh, I press also indicates that it's not an easy race. Sometimes, as I said, we stumble. Sometimes we stagger. But we should always strive. We should always continue on. Sometimes we're running with the wind at our back and sometimes we're running against the wind. But we press on. We press on. We press on. Then finally he talks about the sweetness of the mark. The prize. He said there is a prize. Now for the most part when we think about the prize... We're thinking about heaven. And a, a, a lot of what I said today talks about that uh, uh, striving because when we, we're going to get to heaven. But I don't believe that the actual prize he's talking about here in Philippians chapter 3 is talking about when we get to heaven and having, having rewards. What does he say? I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is the prize? It is the high calling of God. That is what the prize is. The reason why I think we, we, we fall short is because we're looking at something in the distance the prize is to be serving God. God is our reward. We don't have to wait to cross the finish line to get the prize. The prize is being used by God, living with God, knowing God, having a relationship with God. We need to value that prize. Verse 8. He says, Doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things but do count them, uh, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. The prize is the high calling of God. The, the, the prize is the excellency of knowing Jesus Christ. We should be valuing that prize today. What is the prize? It is the high calling. It is the excellency of knowing Christ. Where is the prize? It's right before us. Do you ever see these things, and I don't know if it's just done in cartoons or whatever, but to get a horse to go, they, they, they dangle a carrot in front of them. And they're on the, the, the horse, and they're getting it to run by, by having that carrot. That is the prize. We never actually get there. We get close, or closer and closer to him, as we strive for that prize, but we continue on. Here in this passage, and I'm looking for the exact verse, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself that I have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting these things which are behind and reaching forth. I think Spurgeon preached on this and his sermon was just called Onward. Reaching forth unto those things which are before. 
Will we ever get completely to that prize here on this earth? No. But we just need to keep reaching and reaching and reaching. And the prize that we have is that Christ is with us throughout the race. I want to have everyone stand. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, 